Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for April the 3rd, 2016. We begin a new unit today, Unit 2, entitled Restorative Faith. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Good as New. Good as New. Our devotion reading is taken from Malachi chapter 3, uh, verse 16, and Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. And our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. And that is our print passage today, taken from the Gospel according to Luke, the 7th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. That is taken from Luke chapter 7, um, verse 9 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to know the facts of the story of the centurion's faith and Jesus' healing of the centurion's servant. Number two, exercise strong faith for deliverance from illness like the faith of the centurion in the story. And the third outline um, says uh, commit or recommit to regular visiting the sick in order to pray for them uh, and to encourage them to believe that God will heal according to uh, God's will. We have four outlines today that we'll, we will be talking about uh, from Luke chapter 7. The first one is entitled, The Centurion's Concern for His Servant. second outline is entitled, The Centurion's Humility. The third outline is entitled, The Centurion's Faith in God's Word. And the fourth outline is entitled, The Centurion's Faith Rewarded. I certainly thank and praise God for the privilege of being able to share another word with you from our Sunday School lesson as we begin this new unit two uh, in uh, talking about faith. Uh, we certainly thank and praise God for what we know uh, God is able to do. But I like um, in this uh, lesson aim, the third one, uh, talking about um, that God will heal according to God's will. And that's very important for us to understand um, as far back as I can remember uh, particularly in the church, there's a lot of discussion about healing. There are a lot of types of healing. And one of the things that uh, disturbs us sometimes, even our faith, is what uh, God will do uh, for one situation, but do something different in another circumstance. But we want to talk about that a little bit today. But in this biblical context uh, for this lesson, in Luke's account, the centurion in the text never met Jesus but worked through emissaries instead. A centurion was a Roman officer in charge of a hundred soldiers. At the time, Palestine had been under Roman control for about a hundred years. Generally, Roman officers were very brutal and despised men, but some of them, influenced by Jewish religion, were good men. Such was the case with the centurion in today's lesson. He had gone so far as to build a synagogue for the Jews. Therefore, he found favor with them as a result. The Jews appreciated him and begged Jesus to heal his servant. The centurion showed real reverence to Jesus when he said, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. And Jesus said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel.
It should be noted that uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, the seventh chapter, uh, verses 1 through 35, uh, they are labeled as miracles of mercy. But I want to give you a term that you probably have heard uh, that uh, hopefully you will go back and you will study and run some reference on uh, miracles, signs, and wonders, um, particularly during Jesus' ministry. Uh, these are events uh, which unmistakably involve an immediate and powerful action of God um, designed to reveal His character or His purposes. So as we look into uh, our lesson aims today, and we look into these outlines concerning this centurion's uh, servant uh, who needed a healing, it's important to understand that these signs or miracles, if you will, uh, were done so by Jesus Christ to encourage faith. Uh, when we go back over to John's Gospel, and I think I will read that before we get into uh, our outlines today. Over in the 20th chapter of John, um, down at, um, well, let's go down to verse 30 um, and 31. And it says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So the purpose uh, of these miracles and signs and uh, wonders, if you will, uh, that Jesus performed, um, he did those things to encourage faith uh, that he is the Son of God. Uh, this centurion, um, he is a Gentile, so the fact that Jesus is uh, dealing with him, um, we need to understand that the Jews, uh, Christ's own people, in the first chapter of John, he tells us that Jesus came to his own, and his own received him not. So, uh, it was Christ's plan all along to make the gospel uh, a worldwide uh, uh, proclamation, if you will. That meaning uh, all men might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But that is by faith. So it's difficult, and we'll give you some scriptures a little later on to uh, support our findings, but uh, though individuals needed uh, healing of some kind of a miracle to take place in their life uh, for a particular sickness, death, disease, or what have you, uh, Christ's mission was to make sure that people believed him. Uh, even in the 17th chapter of John, when Jesus talks about his own disciples. He talks to the Father about what they have believed. Uh, not so much what they have seen, but what they have believed and what they have accepted. And so when we have faith in Jesus Christ and who he is in his person and his purpose and his work, then all of these other things or promises, if you will, uh, are certainly uh, a benefit to us as we'll see in this lesson today that this Gentile uh, this centurion uh, he had a lot going for himself uh, and I always say this and we'll move along you may not understand every part of scripture you may not understand everything that Jesus says but you can always believe and that's very important today. So we want to get into these outlines uh, taken from Luke's gospel beginning at uh, chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 and I think I want to read this from the 
NIV translation. When Jesus had finished saying all this, in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. Verse 4, when they, when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. I think it's interesting where this lesson begins uh, as we talk about what the people are hearing. Uh, Jesus is talking to them, uh, helping them to understand uh, his works, helping them to understand his methods, his way. Uh, But he goes on to uh, talk to them when this centurion's servant uh, had been gravely ill uh, and needed help. So as we look at this, um, and, and I want us to understand that uh, when we talk about faith, uh, and though these Jews are, are boasting uh, about uh, what the centurion has accomplished, we have to be careful that what we are receiving from God is not of any work that we can perform. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 help us to understand but I want us to appreciate this text but there are some things that we need to understand that faith uh, is just faith this confident expectation the grace of God the mercies of God what we receive from God apart from any work that we can ever do let's keep that in mind But verse 1 provides the contextual setting for what was to occur relative to the dramatic inclusion of Gentiles in the sphere of Jesus' ministry. The centurion was a respected commander of a hundred soldiers, a man of great respect and authority. This leader of soldiers had a servant valued highly. The word Luke used for servant is slave, and this slave was sick and about to die. Although a slave, the servant was not treated as a human shadow or property, but rather a son. It was highly unusual for a wealthy Roman to deal with or care about his or her slaves in this manner. The centurion's servant was sick, yet he did not drive him away or neglect him but instead laid him at his home. The suffering of the valued servant touched his master's heart. Consequently, the centurion blended affection with authority. We also see the interesting relationship between the centurion and some of the elders of the Jews. In fact, these Jews were the ones who came to Jesus on behalf of the centurion. These elders of the Jews coming on behalf of the centurion vouched for uh, and to his faithfulness and love for the Jewish people and that he observed to be honored with Jesus' healing ministry. The elders of the Jews uh, said specifically that this centurion's love for the Jewish people was seen, in fact, when he built their synagogue. One of the things I love about uh, Christ and what he is teaching us even through this lesson uh, as we read here uh, in some of the commentary uh, is about inclusion. Um, the, the message uh, of Jesus Christ, the good news, if you will, the gospel is for all men. Uh, when we get over into Romans chapter 10, Paul tells us that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But after the rejection uh, uh, of Christ by the Jews, it's it's clear through Scripture that 
uh, the message was turned or the proclamation was turned to Gentiles, other folks outside of the nation of Israel. Uh, but Christ, when he began his ministry, he started with his own. Uh, salvation was for uh, beginning with the house of Israel and then to other persons. But this sign here, uh, not the healing so much, uh, but as Christ signals that this Gentile uh, has faith, and his faith is going to net him uh, a healing for his servant. And so this is the thing that uh, impresses God as we talk about uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Uh, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So this centurion, whatever he has heard concerning the Messiah, the Christ, he has taken to heart. So as we look at how his faith uh, uh, was manifest in his life, we get into the second outline, the centurion's humility, Luke chapter uh, 7, verse 6 and 7, again from the NIV translation. So Jesus went with them, and he was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. That's what I said earlier about what God is doing through Christ and what he has done in our lives. We are not worthy to receive. Uh, we are not, we haven't done anything to deserve it. Uh, we are not uh, 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 so elite that uh, God should take notice uh, of us. And this centurion, what we see about his faith, it's apportioned or proportioned correctly in his attitude. Uh, he has an attitude that, that is humble. He is not proud. He is not boasting. And he confesses that he considered himself a nobody, nothing in the sight of God, in the sight of Christ, that he was unworthy uh, for Christ to even come in his house. You know, that is huge. Uh, and it's important that we, as people of God, that we maintain the right attitude uh, about who we are. We've done nothing uh, to deserve anything that the Lord uh, has done for us or will do for us. We are sinners saved by the grace of God. But it goes on to say here, uh, in response to the centurion's request of Jesus, verse 6a says that Jesus went with them, being in close proximity to the centurion's house. Some friends of the centurion came to Jesus with a message from the centurion. The message, in essence, stated that the centurion felt that he was not worthy to have Jesus come under his roof. In fact, the centurion's message alluded to the fact that he felt undeserving to even come to Jesus himself. The centurion said that all Jesus had to do was to say the word, and his servant would be healed. What a powerful thing to have uh, this centurion uh, uh, again, he has accepted whatever he has heard about Christ. He has accepted it wholeheartedly, and he has humbled himself. But he's in trouble. His uh, servant is in trouble and needs healing. And sometimes when we go in prayer, you know, it's very important. Uh, the Bible uh, tells us to come boldly uh, before the throne of grace, seeking mercy and grace to help in the time of need. But in that boldness, we need humble spirits, humble attitudes, uh, knowing that and reflecting on the fact that uh, uh, God sits high and looks low, and, and we are privileged to be able to come uh, in a humble manner. And, and no wonder Peter says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due time he will exalt you. But it goes on to say here, the question is asked in the quarterly, 
many people who are highly educated and have been blessed with great jobs and social prominence are snobs. How did the centurion differ from other social elites? So we know those things to be true. Uh, some of us cannot stand to be blessed because we uh, immediately get the wrong attitude about who we are and what we have, and, and, and the list goes on and on. But if we stay humble uh, uh, in the sight of God and, and maintain the right attitude, you know, if God has blessed you, we thank God for it. But keep the right spirit with the blessing. You know, it's not that we should become arrogant about who we are, who we think we are. God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. And we don't want to have that spirit of pride and, and, and a bad attitude um, uh, concerning individuals when the gospel uh, is to be uh, uh, preached to all men. All men uh, have a right. Jesus paid the price for all of us to be saved. And we just need to keep those things in mind. But the third outline is entitled, The Centurion's Faith in God's Word. This is Luke chapter 7, uh, verse 8 and 9. Again, from the NIV translation. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, Come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Verse 9, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. So this centurion has authority. He's over people. He tells them what to do, and they do it. And he understands authority very well. He understands how it plays out that he is in a position that others are subject to him. So what does he do? He subjects himself to the power and the authority of God through Jesus Christ. And that's very important. Uh, if you read Colossians chapter 4 verse 1, uh, we have to be mindful that even though you may be a master, you may be uh, someone in management or over people, but you too have a head. You too have someone who is in authority that is over you. Christ is the head of the church, and we are members uh, uh, of his body. So this centurion just recounts uh, uh, how authority works in his life, and it impresses Jesus. It amazes Jesus. Uh, that this Gentile is talking with the right spirit, with the right mind. He understands it fully. Uh, he talks about this authority. And we have to be mindful of that to subject ourselves to the authority that is over us. God has given us. You may not like that uh, arrangement, but Paul tells Timothy uh, uh, in his epistle, he said, to pray for all men. He said pray for kings and princesses and all of those who have authority. He said this is good in the sight of God. So we have to do that. We have to pray for leadership. We have to pray for those that God has given authority and recognize that even though those individuals may be functioning in a way that uh, uh, may not be according to God's word, but God is in control. And so this centurion understands this, and he just recounts what he knows about it. And Jesus says, uh, uh, he commends him, and he says, I haven't found such great faith even in Israel amongst his own people. And that's a very uh, powerful thing to say, to have this commendation uh, pinned on you by Christ not about your outer substances, but about your inner makeup. Uh, I love this. Uh, we've seen this uh, uh, in, in, in passages of Scripture when, uh, particularly with Job, God said he was righteous. Uh, uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth uh, in the New Testament. 
uh, God says they are righteous. You know, when God says something about you, uh, uh, you can take that to the bank. And, and I know uh, it's, it's difficult in our day and age to find someone that has uh, the right spirit. This, but this Gentile centurion, as I said earlier, he has a lot going for himself. As a military man, the centurion explained that he could speak with authority to his soldiers and they would be obedient to his words. The officer's faith was especially amazing because he was a Gentile who had been brought up to know a loving and powerful God. The centurion trusted in the power of God to be transferred um, to deal with and to heal the terrible disease that threatened the life of his valued servant, who was lying at the point of death. The Lord marveled at the man's simple faith. In fact, Jesus said to the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Christ bragging on the centurion's faith is worthy of our attention. He emphatically uh, he said emphatically, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. The fact, the act of faith, which Jesus called great, was so because the man did not ask for references, signs, or wonders to prove Jesus could heal, but instead believed in Christ's supernatural power and divine abilities to heal the servant's malady. You know, let me say this. There are many types of healing that we may need today. But if God chooses to heal, if God does not choose to heal, one of the things that God focuses on is the faith of the individual who is sick. Even if the body is not healed, the faith can be healed. The person can be made whole in his faith, though the body may be broken. And that's very important for us to understand. All of us have had sickness, trouble, problems in our lives. But what's important for us is to keep the faith as we go through the situation. A lot of our circumstances have not changed. It's the same pain. It's a new pain. It's the same sickness. It's the same trial. It's the same tribulation. But do you look at your faith? Are you growing stronger? Are you keeping the faith? It's very important. And as we get to the close of this lesson and we offer our prayers for those of you who may be sick, and shut in. I want you to know that God loves you. God cares about you. God cares about your faith. God cares about your circumstances. God cares about your faith. God cares about what you have, what you don't have, the tears you may shed, the pain you may be going through, but God cares about your faith. We can clearly see that here. Here's the centurion's servant on his deathbed, if you will. But what Jesus is impressed with is the faith that has caused this Gentile, a so-called nobody, to believe that he is able to do what he is asking Christ to do. If you don't take anything else away from this lesson today, I want you to know that God is able. No matter what he does, how he chooses to do it, he may, he may not. We just don't know. But we want to make sure Luke one thirty seven tells us that nothing will be impossible with God. It is possible. And this is where your faith comes in, is to keep believing in the ability of Christ to continue to believe in the power of Christ, to continue to believe in the word of Christ. This is what this centurion 
is doing. And as we get into this last outline, we're going to see that his faith is rewarded. That's very important. That is huge. So God wants us to continue to believe. Back over in the 17th chapter of John, as Jesus prayed for his disciples, he says to his father, don't take them out of the world, but leave them in the world and keep them. So what is Jesus saying here? If he says that in this life, in the 16th chapter of John, in this life you will have tribulations and trials. He said, but be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. So Jesus is saying to his father, I want you to keep these guys in the midst of tribulations and trials. Keep these disciples in a hostile world that hates them because it hated me. Keep my disciples because I'm sending them out. They are ready to go out and minister and to be a blessing to others. But I want you to keep them with your power. That is a huge statement to make. So I want us to be encouraged today to continue to uh, eat of God's word and to continue to believe. Continue to believe. Paul says these words to Timothy. He says, fight the good fight of faith. And that is a battle. It is a battle for all of us when we see situations that don't look good. Just like this centurion saw his servant, but he cried out for help. He cried out. He humbled himself. And that's where we are. We are trusting in God to do above and beyond all that we think and all that we can ask. Let's just keep that in mind. So the centurion's faith, this last outline says, is rewarded. Luke chapter 7, verse 10. It says here from the uh, NIV translation, Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Are you well today in your faith? Are you at peace that you are God's child no matter what has come and what has gone in your life? Do you still believe that God loves you no matter how hard the battle, the trial? And, and, and I'm, I'm ministering to myself. I want you to understand that because all of us are going through something that is a bit that is difficult for us to handle but keep reading the word of god and that's what encourages me i keep a uh, uh, reading and 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 taking in god's word his promises and i i don't know what god will do uh and how he's going to handle everything that i'm going through or that you may be going through but i do know this saints he is able so we thank and praise God uh, for such a powerful lesson of, of, of how faith works. Um, having the right attitude and, and, and having uh, 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 the right spirit and being able to uh, believe in God's word. Uh, I don't know if this servant knew that this, his boss, if you will, his master was fighting for his life with his faith. This was something that uh, soldiers that he commanded, this centurion, all of his soldiers couldn't bring about healing to his servant's life. All of the power and the authority, and, and this is very important for us as we look at this lesson, as, as we look at our culture, even today, there are so many things that are beyond our control beyond our strength, beyond our ability to be able to handle it. But it is just right for God. And I love what he did. Jude put it this way in his benediction. He says, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And this is what we have to remember. 
when you are beyond your strength and ability to solve your problem, Christ knows how and has the power to handle the situation. We want to keep that in mind. So having said that, I want to pray uh, for all of us that are, that are going through something. You might be sick in your body today. If you would allow me to, let me just appeal to my Father in the name of Jesus. And let me just pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. And while we pray, we're going to believe that God is going to do something for us in a, in a great way. Faith is confident expectation. Uh, this centurion knew if he got the word to Jesus that he would have a favorable outcome. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come before you right now thanking you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to call on your name. Father, we thank you for this Sunday school lesson. We thank you for this example of this centurion. And bless us, O oh Lord, that we might have the right attitude. And, and, and bless our faith that we might continue to hope and trust in you. Somebody is sick today. Somebody is not feeling well. Somebody, the doctor, has thrown up their hands and don't know what to do. But God, you said in your word that you were the one that is able. You told us to come to you all who labor and heavy laden, and you would give us rest. And Father, we trust you and we love you. No matter what you do, we know you're able. And I just hope, trust, and pray that not only will this prayer, O oh God, be pleasing in your hearing and in your sight, but that it might be a blessing as it falls upon the conditions that these, O oh God, your people may hear this prayer and be encouraged by this prayer and hope in this prayer and believe in this prayer, not in me, O oh God, but in you and what you are able to do. We thank you for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We command the enemy to take his hands off of God's property in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. We don't belong to you, but we are trusting and hoping in, in our God who is able. Lord, we thank you for Jesus for giving his life and shedding his blood for our sins. And we are looking forward to the miracles and the promises that you will do in our lives. Even the salvation, O oh God, of those who are unsaved. Let this prayer, O oh God, be a hallmark in somebody's life. That they may use it, that they may call upon you in faith. And so be rewarded as this centurion. Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Um, we hope, trust, and pray that you have been encouraged uh, by the word today and that it will be helpful to you as you go through. Just remember this. God loves you. God bless you. God keep you. Keep on believing in Jesus' name. Until such time that God will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.